Well, hello, hello, hello. My name is Sarah, and this is Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Clean Intermittent Fasting. And I'm back, and here we go. And I wasn't off doing, like, non-true-to-my-program things. I was just off because I was so super busy. Then I became just, I guess, I guess the feeling would kind of, like, be homesick for my group, for my my peeps, my turtles, my no matter what club members, my people that do what I'm doing, which is just getting up and doing another day, aging in place, accepting the aging, begrudgingly, but glad to be, you know, here, food sober, food abstinent, food sane. Those are three of the things that I ask for another 24 hours every day to just have have in my life. I, as many of you know, I, I began a long time ago doing these videos with my brief foray into Weight Watchers. And I guess I kind of had a blast with it because I was doing, you know, all the little things with points. It wasn't that fun and shopping and snackies and eating <laughs> You know, it was like three hots and three snacks a day. You know how they, you could have unlimited fruit and veggies and all that kind of stuff. I lost the 17 pounds and then nothing else happened. And so I, I just kind of followed the trends that we all see here on Facebook and YouTube and all the, I, I'm not an Instagram TikTok person, but I know that a lot of the beginnings of a lot of these trends probably started there. So I ended up doing keto, I think, two meals a day. Then I went down to one meal a day and I missed my carbs, truth be told. And I started, um, I was at a main, I was maintaining my weight. I don't know what my weight is today. I maintain my size. I have two pair of jeans that are my tell-alls, and that's what I go with. And so I'm 73, and I've been doing videos and conscious of all of this from Weight Watchers on with the help of all of you for probably eight or nine years now. So here we are again. So I practice clean intermittent fasting with my OMAD. And when I say clean, you know, a lot of people do intermittent fasting and, and they have their two meals a day, maybe one meal a day, but they don't necessarily do the fasting part, what some of us say here, clean. And clean to me, to me means just black coffee, not flavored black coffee. So I choose like a heartier heavier, earthier roast, like Verona, French roast, Italian roast. Sometimes I mix the espresso beans in with it. I like Pike Place too, which is a Starbucks brand. I like to think that I always buy organic, but I don't. I, I end up with a lot of Starbucks. And so, although I have, you know, touted organic coffee, I pretty much buy what's on sale, whole bean, and then I grind it here at home. The other component of the fasting is plain water. I have a hydrogen bottle and it's like this, it's glass with the little gizzards down here below and I put my filtered water in it. You press the bottom, it kind of turns green. You can see little bubbles and I'm doing that five to six times a day. And so that seems to be working. I'm not shouting from rooftops that, you know, I feel different, but I'm doing that. I was a great devotee of Element, L-M-N-T, and I did that for years. It's pricey, but I felt it was worth it. Each little packet was like a one and done of electrolytes, potassium, magnesium, and salt. And uh, I loved it. And then one day I woke up and, and it was just, I had that 
that thing where like it wouldn't go down. It was like my body was saying, don't do that anymore. I don't know. So I keep my water up there, but um, it's just with the hydrogen water. And sometimes I'll have, sometimes I'll have a San Pellegrino. Lord knows I've got like four, eight packs there, plain, unflavored. So those are the two components. And I think that makes all the difference in, it's not what you're eating, for me, it's not what I'm eating, it's what I'm not having during my clean intermittent fast. And I was just hearing sweet pea. Uh, so I practice that every day and then I have my meal and I have my feast. So no more three meals a day, two meals a day, snacking. I love when Jason Funk says snacks, snacks. You don't have snacks when you do this. And so when I have my, when I have my meal, it's, it's a hearty one. I have a pretty big salad every day. I buy the organic red reef, red, red reef, red leaf lettuce. I buy the organic spring mix. I put in crumbled blue cheese, craisins, pumpkin seeds, sliced almonds, salted, roasted sunflower kernels. Um, then celery, some scallions. I have other types of lettuces sometimes. I love the gems from Trader Joe's. Unfortunately, they're not, they're not organic, but I get over myself. I wash them and I love those too. And they're like this dense, like a cabbage romaine and they're baby. They're, they are, they're just little gems. So I love those too. And then I'll have a meat portion and my meat portion has definitely gone down right now I've got some pork uh, ribs cooking slow cooking in the oven with a spice on them that I have a cute story to tell about it and also an organic yam is cooking and that yam is going to be like three or four meals by the time I finish with the salad I'll have you know it, it's a pretty big yam so it's going to be like three or four sections. I'll have like one rib and that's like the entree. Then after that, I'll probably have like good culture cottage cheese, the high fat one with some, well, recently it's been white peaches. Um, I have some, I don't know if they're ready. So I also have a golden delicious apple. So I would chop that up a little Michelle's granola. It kind of says, this is dessert girly. <laughs> so I like it. And then I love the when pigs fly or the rustic bread. And I kind of have that as this is your dessert. Toast it. I have some good butter on it. Sometimes I have some Teddy's um, smooth peanut butter on it. And that kind of wraps my meal. If I'm more hungry, I'll have maybe a second piece of fruit. But honestly, the salad is so good, so dense that I, you know, that really is the, you know, it fills me up. And so because I'm cooking these ribs, I'm going to have like four or five days of the same thing. I don't mind. I'm one of those that I don't mind. I'm a widow. My husband, Greg, that many of you used to see in the background, um, he passed away 14, 15 months ago. So I'm learning my new role and um, I, I realized that some things need more than a screwdriver. <laughs> I've had to call for a lot of outside help. He did everything around here. And so I'm trying to just figure it out one day at a time, how to be a widow. As a lot of you know, I'm sober in, in AA. I've been sober for 37 years. And so a lot of my principles, my practices, my, you know, daily do, and just, just my whole philosophy about everything is based from that one day at a time. And so, as a lot of you know, getting old, having issues, having ailments, having diseases, having to have little operations, it ends up being a one day at a time type of deal, right? 
I can do anything for one day, but don't don't push it, you know? <laughs> and so I've been able to just make my life okay. And I'm I'm I joke that I'm vegetable heavy, but I have meat because I love vegetables. I love going into the stores, Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, um, even some local places, and and just buying the bounty. Do I buy only organic? No, not all the time. Like I have two cauliflowers going now. Well, I have a backup, but I'm kind of the queen of the backups. So the cauliflower I'm using now is not organic. The one that I bought is. So I buy based on what's available, sometimes what's on sale. I love all veggies. I bought a yesterday, uh, two days ago, I bought a spaghetti squash and I bought an eggplant and I'm just going to have fun with those things. I just have no fear in the kitchen. I've got my hex clad, great big um, pan. I do a lot in that. I do a lot with coconut oil, ghee, sometimes butter as well, avocado oil, extra virgin olive oil. And I've got the sprays along the way, all those sort of the coconut oil, the avocado and the extra virgin olive oil, the sprays sometimes. But I, I don't, I, I use what I want with the fats and the oils, not measured anymore. I just make the food taste the way that I want it to taste from cooking it with oil or adding the oil. I like extra virgin olive oil on my salad. I seem to be on that run. As I've said before, sometimes I go on the run of uh, apple cider vinegar and Bragg's vinaigrette, but these days it's extra virgin olive oil and I just and go and have my great big dense hearty salad with my meal, which today will be part of the yam and some of the pork spare ribs. And I, I get excited about food. It's all about food. And coincidentally, I'm an in-store shopper. So for Shaw's Star Market. So I shop for other people. Sometimes I cashier. Sometimes I work out on the self-checkout. And I just love it. I love people and I love food. And I get a good dose of all of that for six hours. My schedule is 6 a.m. to noon. And then I get to come home. And I have my feast, my OMAD, my one meal a day. And I was I listened to tons and tons of podcasts and people and good ideas on what they say. And about a month ago, Callie and Cassie means Cassie's a female and she's all about processed foods, etc. Callie, her brother, is also about all of that. I don't. Callie's not a doctor, but Cassie is. Cassie was mainstream, said enough of this BS, and now is on her own. She's great. So if you see her, catch her, catch both of them actually, with Dr. Mark Hyman, H-Y-M-A-N. So Cassie means C-A-S-E-Y-M-E-A-N-S, and Callie. And also Chris Van Turkigen, something like that. He wrote ultra processed people and you know it's the behind the scenes what the industry is doing to us they don't care about us they only care about profits and so anyway it's about ultra processed foods and before you before I could put that name ultra processed foods onto the things I really no longer eat I'm not a saint I I do every now and then like a piece of cake I like a muffin I do have that bread. It doesn't have the yuckies in it that um, you learn about with the ultra processed foods journey of research. And so, but I'm not buying Ritz. I'm not buying Cheez-Its. I'm not buying Cape Cod chips. I'm not buying um, Wonder Bread, <laughs> things like that. And so most everything in life is processed. I mean, even the coffee beans is considered processed because they roast them right and then you grind them but the ultra processed is when all those chemicals that you don't have in your spice rack you know come into play all the garbage all the things you can't even read 
the ingredient list, all of that kind of stuff. So anyway, I was beside, oh, so I think it was Casey and Callie were talking and they were talking about blood sugar at the end of the meal. After you eat, everything's in your belly. Your blood sugar spikes for a while. If you have a, a CGM, continuous glucose monitor, you might already know all of this. I don't have one of those. those. Um, but anyway, it'll spike, then it slowly comes down. But when you introduce all the food, it's like, whee, party, party inside your body. And so they said one of the best things to do after your meal is to take a brief walk. They're only talking like 10 minutes. So for those of you still doing three squares, you could take three 10 minute walks and definitely improve your blood sugar, the spike, just your overall, it aids digestion. So they, they both um, highly recommend it. So I started adding it into my, my day. So after my OMAD, my different stages, each, each course that I have, I then put on my shoes and I walk around the neighborhood. And in timing it, it's about 25 minutes. I have not driven it to see how far it is. I've done it through all of this heat wave and humidity that we've had over the last week. And so I still do it. I probably am walking slower, but I still do it because huh, lo and behold, I've added that to my routine and now I'd miss it if I didn't do it. I've even done it in the rain, but we've been blessed. There's something about doing it at three in the afternoon. There doesn't seem to be many days with rain so far. So if, if and when it gets to be, if and when, when it gets to be colder and winter, I'll figure that out too. Maybe I'll just wear more layers, but it seems to make a difference and I love it in my routine. And you know, the thing about a nice meal and then taking a walk and having it just start to digest and just kind of closing out the day of, you know, busy. There's something very gratifying about it at the end. It's like, I've had this wonder, I worked, I had this wonderful meal. I took this really nice walk and now it's like legs up my waitress legs for the rest of the afternoon. So I really enjoy incorporating that into my my day. Well, another person that I was listening to talked about having cinnamon. And I've always known about cinnamon being a bl a great bleh, a great blood sugar um aid and that I remember I used to take cinnamon capsules and then um after listening to this man he said, not Saigon, Saigon cinnamon, which is what you see in the stores. It's Ceylon, C-E-Y-L-O-N, cinnamon that you want. I don't know the difference. I don't know why. He just said, make it Ceylon. He said, a quarter of a teaspoon is all you really need. Well, when you go to the store, you won't find Ceylon um, cinnamon. So, You'll, I usually end up buying, I love it, it's a treat. I buy the Simply Organic at my store, sometimes other stores. And so I, I went online and I ordered the Ceylon Cinnamon from Amazon, of course. It's like less than $7, free shipping with Prime. It's organic. And so I have my little measuring quarter teaspoon. And so at the end of my meal with my supplements, with my water, my hydrogen water, and my other supplements, I take this, a quarter of a teaspoon. So anyway, when it gets to be, you know, this low, you order another, at least I do, because I'm the queen of the backup, as I mentioned. So I also needed some fennel seeds. I love fennel seeds. It was in that pork recipe that I made the other day with oregano and basil and oh my god it was so good and so i needed some more of those my store didn't carry those so i ordered a bottle of fennel seeds um organic and then the simply organic ceylon cinnamon this didn't come yesterday something else came instead and it's <laughs> it's harissa harissa organic 
North African heat. So I went onto Amazon and, you know, just keep it, donate it, throw it, whatever you want. We'll send you the Ceylon cinnamon. But it ended up being really, really cool because it's got the most, well, it's organic. It's hot. I like things like that. It's got, all of this is organic. Paprika, caraway, crushed red chili pepper, cayenne, coriander, cumin, garlic, and peppermint and sea salt. So I had bought, I had bought my spare ribs yesterday and I knew I was going to slow cook them today and I was going to do it. I slow cook them, kind of keep draining off the fat. And then when I have it, then I put on the barbecue sauce. I don't cook it in the barbecue sauce and just my way. And uh, so I just opened up this puppy, put it all over the ribs and now it's slow cooking in my oven. I wish you could smell it. It's just, is it ready yet? And I stuck the yam in the oven too. So anyway, it was funny because here's a mistake that they made and it ends up this wonderful spice. I don't have to go out and buy eight or nine spices. I don't know if any of you have that in your, in your um, spice collection, but it's just nice to have that mixture and it was organic and I guess free to make. So I'll be having that today. So part of part of what I do, which I'll probably bring up again at a different time because it's now 22 minutes, is being a member of the No Matter What Club, NWMC. You've heard me talk about this a lot. It's like no matter what. So if I'm at work and somebody brought something in or the break room is filled with all the bakery goods that didn't sell yesterday, I'm a member of the No Matter What Club. No Matter What Club. Which means, oh, this is nice. If there's something there that I absolutely positively must have, I wrap it up and I take it home with me and I have it with my OMAD. So it's no deprivation, it's still enjoying life and a treat, but I'm not giving up my food plan, my way of eating, my way of life, which is intermittent fasting that's clean, and my OMAD, I'm not giving it up because that's over there. I will have it but I will have it on the terms of what my food program is and continues to be because I don't want to change that. I don't want to not feel the way that I feel at 73, almost 74, like two months. And that's the way, that's the way she blows. So I'm back. I'll be doing videos every now and then when I can. And the next time I will talk more about the No Matter What Club and what else I'm up to. Thank you so much for watching. This is how I do it. I'm so glad you're here. This program or this, this channel is about finding your jam. What works for you? What makes you tick? We're all veterans. If you're my age, you are a veteran of diet culture and trends and doing it because she did it, not doing it because she didn't do it, thinking about Ozempic 24-7, can I afford it? <laughs> do I have a 401k that can sustain the cost? Can I get my doctor to write a prescription? All of that stuff. I'm doing it with food. I'm doing it with clean intermittent fasting. Fortunately, I'm more in a maintenance stage so I don't want to lose more. Well, of course, I want to lose more. I'm an American female. I always want to lose 10, right? But I'm happy with who I am. No deprivation. I enjoy life. I enjoy food. And once a foodie, always a foodie. So I will be back and we'll talk more. Thank you so much. This has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Clean Intermittent Fasting. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye for now.